I'm a student here at Columbia College Chicago and the reason the students are here today um, is because our tuition is increasing at an awful rate. Um, not only that, but a lot of student worker positions have just been cut. Um, I myself am a student worker in the journalism department. I'm a science journalism major um, and I don't have a job for next semester. Um, which means I can't pay for my tuition, especially the tuition that keeps increasing. Um, classes are getting cut. My program, Science Journalism, is no longer available. It's not being offered anymore. Um, so I'm basically getting an education that I'm paying for, but I'm not getting the classes that I need. I'm going to graduate with a Science Journalism degree, but I'm not earning it. I am just have to supplement it for other classes that I feel aren't valid to the degree at all. Well, we have like a list of demands circulating, but the main ones are the tuition freeze and the cooperation between staff, students, and administrators. Are you coordinating with the adjuncts at all? Um, the coalition is an adjunct student coalition, and it's with both of us. There's no one side over the other, it's just equally both of us. And uh, are you familiar with the adjunct complaints? I am familiar with the adjunct complaints, but I feel as if I can't speak to them and give them the full like, what's the word I'm looking for? The full respect that they deserve, because I'm not an adjunct faculty member, so I don't, I cannot vocalize the complaints the way that an adjunct faculty member would. But you, you, you have yeah. issues in common. Yeah, we have issues in common. One of the biggest issues that's happening is that classes are being decreased, like sections are being decreased, and so classes that used to have three sections are only going down to one, and so those who are adjunct faculty members are losing A, money, and B, class time for students who value their teaching. Do you, uh, when you come into school, do you ever you see these signs here, industry leading fat, yeah, all I that see, stuff? Yeah, I see the signs. And then, what, like when I came here for orientation, I was like, oh, that's so cool. But now, like, because, now at the end of my freshman year, I'm like, this is really sad. Because industry leading faculty is not, it is, but it's not the truth. What is the truth? <laughs> The truth is that the industry leading faculty that have the potential to be great in teaching us and teaching us what we need to know in order to go out in the world are being shafted. They're being shafted, their classes are being cut, and kids who need their classes to graduate aren't being able to have those classes. And that's not fair because then those kids are stuck here for another six months waiting to graduate for a class that is only offered in the fall and or the spring. The student yeah. loans going up then? The student loans are going up. Our tuition has gone from no. 42000 to about 43000 with the creation of six new vice president positions, all having six-figure salaries. Not only that, but we don't know where exactly our money is going. The budget isn't exactly transparent. So the coalition to save Columbia is to really stop the corporatization that we have seen in the last, especially three, four months, take over Columbia College. Um, the corporation, corporate decisions, such as um, top-down decisions to eliminate programs without any faculty input, um, increased tuition, to increase class size in some cases from 20 students to 200, 200 students in a classroom. Um, all of these decisions are done without faculty input, without the strategic planning in place, and, um, and it goes against the mission of Columbia College. So the students, the faculty have decided we need to save Columbia. Um, that we've initiated a vote of no confidence against the administration and we've asked the Board of Trustees to step in and remove um, both the President and the Provost and to um, meet our demands and our demands are to stop the union busting that's going on. We've seen them not honor the contract that we fought so hard to um, win, the PFAC contract, the part-time faculty contract, the majority of the faculty here are contingent faculty. Um, it's what the school was founded on. So. The college right now is in, in so many labor violations. We're filing several charges at the NLRB. Um, and at this point, we're saying stop the unilateral decisions. And then at the same time, they're trying to hire, I think, six or seven top paid VP positions, executive positions. Um, and we're, we're saying we've had enough and we're going to save the college. We appear to be at a stalemate with uh, an administration doing exactly as it wants 
and not meeting any student demands, union demands, faculty demands for increasing tuition, increasing class sizes, um, not caring about the student body, and certainly not caring about faculty members. Well, I have student loans, um, and my parents are not in the position, the financial position, to help me pay for college or help me pay off my student loans. Um, so you can say that I am in a deep amount of debt right now, and there is no light at the end of the tunnel. The difference between a gambler and a student. The gambler can file for bankruptcy. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead. You're just going to look at me? Um, yeah, it's for Metro Minutes. For what? It's for Metro Minutes. Yes, yeah, at Columbia. For journalism. How about yourself? Would you be in this demonstration anyway? I would be, because I am one of the students. <laughs> My tuition is it's extremely high, and I don't know how I'm going to be able to pay for next semester. Well, it's not just a faculty issue. When they increase class size and they're increasing tuition, uh, they're also cutting some classes that many students need to graduate. So it's affecting them, and they've submitted a list of demands to the administration. And today is the deadline for those demands to have been met. The students that I have talked to are disgusted by the fact that some of their favorite part-time and adjunct faculty are getting fired. They're losing their courses, um, they're losing their sections, and they are no longer able to teach. Um, one of my favorite professors, um, he is losing his sections, and he has broken down in class um, telling us that he will not have a class to teach next semester and he is out of a job. When he told us that his he was basically fired and I saw him break down, I basically broke down. This is a guy who is, he's tough, he is a brick wall and to see someone crumble like that is just, it's disheartening. It's I am a, a PFAC member for the last 10 plus years. This is my, sort of my 11th year here. I'm in the art and design department for the, and I teach uh, drawing, and uh, I've taught drawing and painting. And uh, and I've you know I've been a member of the union here for since uh, you know since I could join. Part-time faculty, which is the union, is uh, uh, all uh, part-time faculty here, which. Uh, which I think still at one point made up 77% of all faculty that teach here, uh, uh, represents us as uh, a bargaining, bargaining unit and as, as, a, as our union to uh, look out for our interests. We've had, a, uh, for three years we had a fight for a contract and they tried to bust up the union then and then the new administration came in and we thought they came in with all of branches and signed the contract and said everything was going to be great. And in the last two years, uh, people have lost, there's a, lost jobs. There's a lot less work to be done. You can walk around the hallways on days when it used to be full. Ten years ago, it was full and going. Now it's like a ghost town up there. And it's all because of the, the rise in tuition, the lack of uh, continuity in administration in the uh, and, and everything else that's happened to other colleges like uh, Harrington College of Design and the College of DuPage. It's top heavy with corporate uh, administration who think that uh, edicts uh, somehow trump people who have an in institutional memory here of, uh, of, of what Columbia was based on. And Columbia base, was based on the fact that it was for the underserved to be able to have kids that couldn't afford to go to Art Institute or Rhode Island School of Design to come here with an open enrollment and have a chance to have a career uh, as a, as a, in the arts. And if it hadn't been for open enrollment and a school much like this, I wouldn't be standing here today with a 40-year career of uh, drawing and painting. And, and another thing people ought to realize that all us PFAC members are not just teaching and doing nothing else. The reason we're teaching is because we're having shows. I have a show, I'm in a group show that opens in River North today. We have shows, we have visiting artist stints, we go, I was in, I was in southern France for a summer on a fellowship. I mean, we're not, you know, the reason that we're coming in as part-time faculty is because we have full-time artist jobs. And, and many of us are, like me, in the early 60s, 
and, and actually want to give back to the students somehow, to mentor kids so they don't have to make the same mistakes that I made. And, and on a closing note, I come from West Virginia, I'm sixth generation West Virginia, and I grew up in the mouth of a coal mine, and I know how coal miners work, and I know how unions work, and I know what they do is they get the members of the, they get the miners fighting against each other so they can take over and break unions. I'm as on faculty, and they're trying to change the way the school operates. Uh, they are not giving their senior adjunct faculty classes in any regard. People who've been here and who have formed Columbia as we know it today are being eliminated from the program, absolutely. And after we signed a monumental contract, the CBA, in 2013, the college has not implemented or acknowledged our contract whatsoever. And this is the reason we're protesting today. Columbia College was a, formed and based on practicing professionals who um, taught at the college to add that professional aspect to the teaching experience. And um, as part of the college's mission statement, etc. And they seem to have forgotten that altogether. So what they're doing, they're eliminating the more specified professionals and they're hiring newly graduated people, students, or whatever you want to call them, recent graduates, and hiring them at the graduate level. I mean, you know, it's recent graduates from graduate school. Eliminating us, paying them a lot less money. So I imagine this is a trend around the country because it is a way for the college to save money, but at what cost? At the uh, cost of good valued education, um, instructors who have taught and have formed the college in a very positive way over many years, and the connection to the professional working community. If Columbia is transitioning to some kind of business model, um, that's a huge problem because that means the aspect of education becomes secondary and the quality of education becomes secondary and it all becomes about how can we save money and put more money in our pockets the high administrators at the expense of the faculty and most importantly the students. What do we want? When do we want it? I mean the vote of no confidence takes place in an, um, in an environment where the faculty, the um, Students have lost confidence in the administration. In other words, they have tried to resolve things collaboratively, and in our case, we've tried for over a year, and now instead of um, resolution and promises that have been broken, we've seen um, an escalation against the union, against the students, against the missions. Um, I know a lot of the students are going to take our opportunity and our rights to go into the building and sit in front of the, Dr. Kim's office and we will not move until he agrees to talk with us and talk about our demands. I anticipate that he's going to ignore us uh, for the most part, that's what he's been doing ever since we started this coalition, um, but I am hopeful that Kim will eventually decide to talk with us. Okay, let's do it. Uh, okay. I can't remember how it starts. Uh, Dr. Kim is in there! Uh, right? Yeah, Dr. Kim is in there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, administration, administration is unfair. Wait, okay, okay, we got it, we got it. Administration is unfair! Dr. Kim is in there! Standing with the provost! Killing what we love most! Yeah. We're going in six up at a time. So who's coming? Will. Should I come with? You're welcome. Okay. One camera person. One camera person. Okay. Person. No, Will's not. Yeah, Will's not a camera person. Okay. Okay, so one, two. You're going? Three, four, five, six.
to try to see, yeah. see Dr. Kim? Yes, uh, someone's actually going to come out. <laughs> I mean, we don't mind going to the doctor. Okay. I'm going to have to ask how long we're going to keep it. Accommodating them? We don't have to. Yeah. No. no. <clears throat> Especially because I don't see a bathroom over here. That's one of the right. yeah. We certainly okay. don't have to keep caged in this. Yeah. Okay, this is, we're not animals. No. <laughs> okay. You can quote that. Can I get it on recording? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to keep us caged in. We're not animals. <laughs> Sarah Schleter, you know how to spell it. Protest, <laughs> you know me. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Schleter, Sarah Schleter. Well, I mean, I understand for yes, with safety stuff, but they can go into the hallways. They can go. The thing is, if we actually, if we go into the conference room, it seats like 25 people, <laughs> which is how many we have. So. Hey, Diana, Anna Hi. Chapman. Hey, nice to meet hey, you. Hey, good to see you. Nice to see you. We were expected to go in there. Okay, no, well, actually, this, yeah, you're, this is the area that you guys are able to go in, actually. Okay, so Dr. Kim's not going to make I'm just saying this is the particular area, so would you like a few more, or? Um, yeah, I think the students want to come up. Yeah. I know, but you're going to get another people to a, uh, Coming uh, here right now. I think we're at 20, let's count. Let's see how many we have. Yeah, that they So I, I bring it up. But to answer our question, is Kim going to be my first? So you don't know what he wants to do. So this is my, that's my function. <laughs> We're just going to ask him um, to see if he's going to be willing to meet with us. Just three of us. Just the three of us. The door is locked. You can't get in. Oh, we can't ask. No, I'll ask for you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, wait. Right. It's Brett. Hey, Brett. Um, they're requesting uh, that someone come out and talk with them. It's three of them that went to the court. We're not allowed. Not them, but Somebody's got to get in contact with us. <laughs> account to make sure it's safe up here and and uh, they breached the stairwell so we're trying to figure out how many there's about six of them he said okay and how many people do we have up here well we counted so I think we 19. agreed to 20 and well the last I counted we had 22 and another one came up and the ones that are on the elevator now so the doors are, are locked so they won't let us in um, they're putting a limit to the amount of students um, and faculty that can come up and so we have students who are right now trapped in the hallways they've locked the fifth floor elevators so they won't let any more students in the elevators um, there's plenty of room in there to accommodate at least 60 70 people but um, they're not letting any more um, faculty or students up. Uh, my concern is that there's students who are in the elevators and they're refusing to let them up into the area and so far there's been no response from Dr. Kim. I think that's unacceptable especially since his platform has been transparency and willingness to talk and discuss these issues. Um, this is a clear message. A locked door with security guards, I mean, a locked elevator system, and trapping students in an elevator is not the right message right now. I'm sorry, is there, is there someone trapped in an elevator that you're aware of? Because I'd like to take care of it. There's, they said they can't come into the fifth floor. No, there's nobody trapped in an elevator. There's, let me correct that. There's no, there's no, there's none of the students can have access. They've locked out the fifth floor so that none of the students are faculty. But obviously, certain people can come through, but students and faculty cannot come into the fifth floor. And there are students on the staircases right now, and they are only allowed to go as high as the fourth floor. And they're above on the sixth. And they're on the sixth, but you cannot get access to the fifth Here's floor. Here's a picture. <laughs> can there's I, a picture, can yeah. I see the picture, yeah. Yeah. All of our communication right now, um, student to student, student to faculty, faculty to faculty, is um, social media, cell phones. Side of stairs. So this is his response to our demands. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, this is his response. Locking us out. So um, 
blocking and locking himself in. I think we should have all this. Like I don't know. This we is should you should tweet. Send this yeah, I'm, can I'm you send that to Nancy right, right now for me and me? Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's let's get this out. On yeah, I, I just like tweeted like five things. I'm gonna keep doing it. Did you use the hashtag Safe Columbia? Yeah, it's all under Safe Columbia. And we're gonna um, we're gonna have this be all faculty and students at this point. So clearly, there's a board of trustees meeting that is going on. So do we have a response if Dr. King's going to meet with us? Has anyone checked? You checked? Uh, I did place the call, but... No response? Okay. Yeah. 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 God, this is amazing. This is great. I'm calling this on times again. You know what? I'm, you should right away. Yeah, right now. Know. Um, I'm shocked that they would treat students like this, to be honest. I really know. Yeah. Susan, um, are there people still outside? Dr. Kim, shame on you! Dr. Kim, shame on you! Shame on you! They've limited the amount of, um, of people that are up on the fifth floor. They've locked us out. We can't even go into the office area to ask to meet with the president. Um, and students right now are trapped in the um, staircase. Um, and these, they've locked the elevators so nobody else can go on the fifth floor. Um, so everyone should be pretty outraged because this is the message of silence to our demands from Dr. Kim, not even a conversation. I never listen Has there been a response from Dr. Kim? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not yeah. Dr. Kim's spokesman. I'm, I'm in charge of security. Is this spokesman here? Oops, this is all very by the book stuff. Uh, Heather, um, hi, sorry, this is Diana Valera. We met the other day. Um, hi, you know what? Um, I just want to make sure that it's clear. The students are actually not being allowed um, in the president's area, and the president's not coming out at all to speak with us. So um, the request is, you know, before they actually sit here overnight to try to like at least have a meeting, um, you know, with um, Dick if possible, um, that would be great. I know that uh, a few of us would like to at least make sure that he's aware of what's going on and have a, an opportunity to speak with him. is going to fund administrators. It's obviously not going to classes because classes are being cut. It's not going to, to help the faculty because faculty are being cut as well. So where exactly is our money going if it's not exactly benefiting us?